I'm Dan Whitney for Weekend Earth. Recently, I was invited to a camping event that literally took you out of this world. And the fun didn't stop there. This is event camping, and it offers campers that little something extra to keep them occupied. It's stuck in the ground. Whether by car, camper, bus, or trailer, these families have traveled from all over to get a peek into some of the most diverse optics on the planet. Focuses on the sun. Poised like something out of a sci-fi movie, these reflective covers protect a variety of telescopes. For the next several nights, planets, stars, nebula, and a host of other astronomical eye candy will be viewed by visitors, young and old. All this courtesy of the astronomy clubs gathered here today at Shady Pines Campgrounds. We're here at the uh, Summer Star Party, hosted by the Rockland Astronomy Club here in Savoy, Massachusetts. And as you can see, all the telescopes behind me, around me, are waiting for a clear night. And for gents like Dave, Todd and Ed, members of the Rockland Astronomy Club, it's another chance to pull out the gear, grease the wheels, and do some splaining. It's a Dobsonian telescope. Normally, like the telescopes, like what you'd picture, like you know, you got a, you got a tripod, you've got you know um, some lenses, but this is like you know, you got a big mirror at the back. It's and a it's a very bucket. simple design. Well, bucket. that design was actually created by uh, Sir Isaac Newton. The, the but what Newtonian. John Dobson did was he took the Newtonian yeah, design yeah. and put it on this base. John Dobson did it this way so it was easier well, to swing. Yeah, because yeah. this weighs, and this hand weighs 400 pounds. So if you try to get you know, the mirror itself is 90 pounds, you know, so the amount to hold. 90 pounds with with like a focal this is a focal length of 3000 you know millimeters so you would need like it wouldn't be portable anymore right so you have to put it in an observatory so that was one of the issues is people people couldn't like create really big scopes you know the reason why you want a scope like this is not so you can see further it's so you can see dimmer objects dimmer objects more like the objects we're looking at you know they're just really really you know faint when you're looking at galaxies it's always a better, bigger is better. When you're looking at nebula, bigger is better. If you're looking at a planet or if you're looking at stars, smaller is often better if the seeing is bad. If the seeing is perfect, I'm still better. The exciting part about this event is you don't need a thing to partake. The members here open up their optics to you, explain what you're looking at, and as mentioned, give you a breakdown on what to expect from each telescope. And they're not just limited to evening viewing. I'm looking through a telescope owned by Barlow Bob, and this telescope is directed right up at the sun. This turned out to be the highlight of my day, solar viewing. Awesome! Sunspots, solar flares, rotation, all happening right before your eyes. It is fascinating. But do not try this at home. The filters on this telescope were specifically designed for solar viewing, and boy oh Boy, do you get your money's worth. The multi-coated lenses were designed to protect the eyes and the glass within the scope. That combined with the bino viewers and the solar tracking device make this puppy worth every dollar of the 10000 it cost to put together. Todd has a few telescopes he brought in from his store, the Golden Pond Trading Center in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. He also has first-hand knowledge of the excitement shared by viewing our closest star. The kids are the best. The kids are the best. I don't care what you do. You put you know, an eight, nine-year-old, and I've got three kids, and they look through it, and one of my passions is the sun. It always has been. And when you see the sun, and you can look at something coming off the sun, it always changes day by day. A lot of these galaxies you look at don't change. They stay the same. They never change. Right. The moon never changes. The planets do change enough because they do rotate so you can see different things. But to hear a kid go, wow. <laughs> you know, and it, it, it gets it you right. Me. It, it gets you right here. It's like, wow! There you go. I got another one in. If you or anyone you know is in the market for a telescope, you need to track down a summer star party and take a little test ride through the universe. If for nothing else, to see the stars in a whole new light. But take care not to bump anything. Most of these scopes drive themselves, and the slightest nudge can knock them out of alignment. Best to keep your hands in your pockets. Oh, and. Once you've seen the close-ups, or the colors, or the moons of Jupiter, you may feel a little bite. That'll be the bug. The folks at Shady Pines Campground thought of everything. For those not interested in the night viewing, there are other options. Where are you guys going? 
to the dance. To the dance. To the dance. The dance. Be home at 10. <laughs> With the sky clouded over, the next best thing was to pull up a fire and think about the following day's events. Rocket day. These guys are looking to clear the atmosphere with this bad boy. What are you building here? Three stage? Four stage? No, it's not really, they're all going to be together. Hi, I'm Melissa Patrick, and we're at Shady Pines Campground in the rec hall building our yearly rockets. The order of the day here is if you want to launch it, you got to build it. And that requires patience, teamwork, and tolerance. In all forms. <laughs> the first step is assembling and gluing all the parts. All five feet of them. Then it's out to the body shop where the second phase takes place. Decoration. Everyone looks forward to this phase. Personalizing their rocket any way they like. That's their baby out on the launch pad and, and they want it to look good out there. Everyone's skill is utilized out here. Mine is tying knots, all with the same name. Half hitch. Every one of them. Then after a little dry time, it's off to the mechanic for a brand new engine. With engines installed, it's off to the launch pad. The crowd gathers. The rocketeers line up and take their place at ignition control. They're waiting on the engineers to hook them up. And soon, for these puppies, it's going to be nothing but sky. Five, four, three, two, one. I think it's going to us. There's no shortage of excitement or creativity here. One of the great things about event camping is it brings us together. It's not just another camping getaway, it's an event. And there's more to do, more people to meet and friends to be made. <laughs> now for the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> and will it work? Well, this one is probably going to do the same thing. The last one had so much power, had four rockets, three on the sides, one in the center, and when they ignited it, they had to launch it off of a 12-volt battery to get the ignition. Next to the 12-volt battery. <laughs> to get in on all this fun, search the web, read the papers, ask around for the nearest star party or astronomy camp out near you. Look at those kids go. <laughs> if it's your first time camping, go to WeekendEarth.com and click on Car Camping. There you'll find some tips and ideas along with a bring-along list for your basic getaway.